The January doldrums, the winter blues, SAD, seasonal affective disorder. These are all terms that we hear this time of year, but they're not necessarily all the same thing. With me to talk about this is Angèle Delacio from the Canadian Mental Health Association. Welcome, Angèle. Thanks for having me. All right, so we'll start with, uh, let's talk about the difference between, say, the winter blues, feeling down this time of year, and seasonal affective disorder. Yes, and you know, that's something that comes up quite a bit, especially after the holidays when everything's kind of over and you're packing up the Christmas tree and putting everything away. You, it's the, those, the, the, the feelings of sadness or uh, the blues, as you mentioned, kind of start setting in. And then that, that's actually pretty common. About 15% of people experience the winter blues, which is not the same as seasonal affective disorder. So seasonal affective disorder is a mental health, a chronic mental health condition that typically happens during the winter months. And gets better, resolves itself uh, through the summer uh, and spring. But the winter blues is just a feeling less energetic, more lethargic, um, wanting to sleep more, wanting to, uh, you might gravitate to comfort foods a little bit more. Um, it's kind of like feeling like you want to hibernate, you know, it's just no energy. Um, and that actually coincides with your cir circadian rhythms. Um, just the lack of sunlight kind of tells the brain to be tired because it's dark out or it's dark earlier. So you kind of respond to that. So sunlight is actually something that can really boost your energy during the winter months. All right, and on that note, let's talk. Uh, we'll start with, uh, with the winter blues. What can people do to uh, alleviate sunlight you've just mentioned? So yeah, some really easy things that we often repeat when it comes to mental health is, well, obviously for the winter blues, you, uh, you want to get out more. You want to you know, participate in activities um, during, the sun, you know, during daylight hours. Um, so you want to maybe plan some, you know, take advantage of the winter months. I know there's a great event happening uh, uh, right through February at La Mutter Park, and I think we, I, I ran into you there. So maybe some sledding during the day, trying to soak in some of that sunlight. Um, maybe attending a, a day spa, you know, an outdoor spa where you're outside uh, skiing, tobogganing. Uh, just taking a walk during your lunch break when the sunlight is out can be really beneficial. Um, and incorporating exercise, because we know that's a mood booster, um, especially if you're doing it with the curtains open um, or in a gym where there's lots of windows. So just, again, expo lots of exposure to sunlight as much as possible in the winter would be beneficial. Eating right, you know, healthy eating. I think pizza and poutine and wings is, a, you know, something you probably want to gravitate to. But in the winter months, especially, you want to maybe have more complex carbs, you know, like whole wheat pastas, whole wheat bread, fruits, veggies, water, because you're going to feel better eating um, those types of foods than, say, pizza or, you know, a big sub or a donut. Um, that's just going to make you feel more lethargic. Um, and again, things like alcohol, uh, t people tend to, you know, if they have nothing to do, they might have a drink, they might socialize indoors. But again, alcohol can be a depressant, which would not really uh, help with the winter blues. All right. Now moving on to seasonal affective disorder. Obviously mm -hmm. it's a little bit more of a severe case and it might not just be an issue of getting out into the sun. What can people do? Uh, how can they reach out for help? When okay, so that's a good point. So when expo more exposure to sunlight isn't working, increasing exercise and physical activity isn't working and you're eating right and that's not improving your mood and you're noticing a persistent pattern that doesn't seem to be resolving itself, that's when you want to be more, you know, maybe more concerned and you want to talk to a professional, uh, a mental health professional, a doctor, um, and then maybe some therapies like light therapy has been proven to be very effective for seasonal affective disorder uh, amongst others. Um, so you'd have to talk to a qualified professional, but uh, there are a lot of things you can do if it is indeed seasonal affective disorder. And if someone's battling with, uh, with either the winter blues or seasonal affective disorder, there's still, unfortunately, as much as we try, there's still sometimes a stigma for, against reaching out for help. So let's, uh, let's alleviate that and talk about how important it is, if you're feeling this way, to reach out and tell someone. Right, and that could start in the workplace or in your families, um, you know, just explaining how you're feeling and why you think you're feeling this way. Um, reaching out if you have employee assistance program at work, someone to just talk to about this and getting some suggestions, some ideas. And if, you know, worst case scenario, if you are really struggling, reach out to your doctor, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, reach out to some of the community uh, support services we have for mental health in our community. Uh, we have walk-in counseling clinics uh, on Thursdays that is available. Uh, there's the mental health building, the Cornwall Community Hospital, there's CMHA, um, lots of resources. And if you don't remember these, there's always 2 one that can guide you in the right direction as an alternative resource. 
Absolutely. Well, Angel, I want to thank you for uh, joining us again in studio and uh, for all your uh, wise words and when it comes to the winter blues. Thank you very much.